Hey mathematics learners, welcome to Distance Learning with Lee, where I make learning mathematics super easy. On today's video tutorial, guys, we are going to be going through question 4.1. And question 4.1 deals with finance, right? In particular, income and expenses, all right? Before you get started with today's video tutorial, guys, please make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. Please make sure that you click on that notification bell so that you get notified every single time I upload a new video tutorial, guys. And also, don't forget to give this video tutorial a huge thumbs up because that really goes a long way in helping the channel grow and then helping the channel to reach more learners that want to better their mathematics marks so without any further ado guys let's get started with today's video tutorial <laughs> Question 4.1 says the cost of living has increased significantly in all countries, right? Income received from employers does not cover expenses. Refer to an extra E and answer the questions that follow, okay? So let's have a look at an extra E, all right, and see what is given to us there, right? So an extra E basically has um, a stacked bar graph, right? So we've got um, a bar graph that basically represents income and expenses from different parts of the world right okay um the regions or the bars that are shaded um in the dark gray um represent the income and then the regions um that are shaded in the light gray represent your expenses okay okay on our y-axis, we've got the values, right, of the income and the expenses. And on the x-axis, right, we've got the different places, right, from different parts of the world. So we're basically going to use this stacked bar graph to help us answer the questions that are given to us. Okay. So question 4.1.1 says, determine the difference in income between people living in Los Angeles West and the people living in Boston East, right? Guys, still, this question tells us exactly what we need to do, right? We just need to get the, we actually need to get the difference in the income, right, between the people living in Los Angeles West and the people living in Boston, right? So we're gonna focus on the income for Los, um, Los Angeles West. We're gonna focus on the income for uh, Boston East and we're gonna get the difference um, in income between these two places, okay? So what is the income, right, for Los Angeles um los angeles west okay so the income for los angeles west right is sixty three thousand three hundred and forty three okay what is the income for boston east okay the income for boston east is 59,234 all right so now all we need to do we are going to basically get the difference um, in the incomes between Los Angeles and Boston East. So let's do that. This is question 4.1.1, right? Okay, so the difference in income is equal to, what is the income for Los Angeles East? It was 63,343 minus. What was the income for Boston East? 59,234, okay? So if you punch that into your calculator, what do you get? You get the difference to be 4,109, okay? So that is the difference um, between the incomes of people living in los angeles west and boston east okay let's go on to the next question question 4.1.2 which city has the lowest expenses right so we're going to go to our nxje e and we're basically going to look for the city that has the lowest expenses, right? So we're gonna look at the bars that are shaded in the light gray, right? And the bar that is the lowest, right? is the city that has the lowest expenses right so we can already see that okay the city with the lowest expenses if you can see if you were to basically use um the bars to basically give your answer you'd actually think that 
um, San Diego West and Chicago East both have the lowest expenses, right? Or you think that their expenses are the same. However, you, that's why you actually need to use the data values that are given to us here at the bottom because those ones are actually more accurate, okay? So we see that actually the expenses for San Diego West is 48023 okay? However, the expenses for Chicago East is 48021 So in this case, we can already see that actually um, Chicago East is the city with the lowest expenses okay so in this case don't try to just um especially if they give you the actual figures okay don't try to use your bars to just determine um or to basically um give your answer rather use the figures that are given to you because then with the figures right you will have a more um accurate answer or correct answer okay right so let's just write that down question 4.1.2 chicago east okay is the city with the lowest expenses okay let's go on to the next question question 4.1.3 determine the implications of expenses exceeding income right exceeding means being more than your income right so what happens if your expenses are more than your income this question just needs you to think about it practically right if your expenses exceed your income that basically means that you are living way above your mean right and if you're living way about, uh, above your means, that basically means that you'll end up taking loans to account for the additional expenses, right, leading to debt, okay? So in this case, if you are basically the implications of expenses being more than your income, basically uh, means that you'll have less buying power right you basically need to cut down on certain costs so that you are able to basically make ends meet okay um without getting yourself into debt okay so we are going to write that down okay but please note here any reasonable answer will be accepted okay even if you say if your expenses exceed your income you base um that basically means that you're living way above your means and if you're living way above your means you'll end up taking loans to account for your additional expenses leading to even with even just having that explanation um will be correct right but i'm just gonna write down the explanation that um, I saw in the memo just to make it quick, right? But if your answer is along those lines, that will also be correct, okay? So the implications is having less buying power. Therefore, you need to cut down on certain items, okay? Let's go on to question 4.1.4. Would an increase in salary have an impact on your tax payment right explain your answer okay so i'm gonna basically explain what happens if your salary basically increases okay that basically means that the amount that you're gonna pay for tax will also increase because if we actually take it back to what we've basically been doing um when we were uh, dealing with tax you would actually realize that um certain salaries or certain amounts that people earn per annum fall within a particular tax bracket right and if an amount falls between um between a particular tax bracket that also determines how many uh, how much tax um you will basically have to pay right so if now your salary increases right and that increase in salary um pushes you to a different tax bracket right or even just an increase in salary that also means that the amount of tax that you'll pay will also increase, right? So to answer our question, would an increase in salary have an impact on tax payment? You'll say yes, right? Okay, when the salary increases, so does the amount you pay in tax, okay? Let's write that down. Right, so yes, when your salary increases, so does the amount you pay in tax, right? And let us have a look at the last question. Question 4.1.5 says, determine the percentage difference between the income and expenses of people living in Chicago East, right? So we're going to focus on the bars, particularly your income and your expenses, for people that are living in Chicago West, right? If they want you to basically determine 
percentage difference, right? They basically want you to determine the change in percentage, okay? And this is basically a formula that you would have seen when you guys were basically dealing with your income, um, your topics on finance, um, in particular when you were dealing with income and expenses, right? You would have seen this formula that says that um, a change in percentage is equal to your new value minus your old value divided by your old value, okay? So that formula you would have seen in this topic, right? However, in this case, we just want to basically determine the percentage difference between your incomes, your income and your expenses, okay? So let's just set that up quickly, okay? Question 4.5, right? So I said that your change in percentage, right? Remember, changes in percentage is determined by basically taking your new value minus old value divided by old value, okay? So I'm sure you guys have seen this formula before, okay? And why I'm saying we're basically calculating the change in percentage, right? If a question says, what is the percentage difference? You basically are looking for the change in percentage, okay? And this question basically tells you how you basically need to set up your numerator, right? Or your values at the top, right? So in this case, right, you don't have a new value, you don't have an old value, right? But you do have an income and expense, right? So in this case, right, this question basically tells you what you basically need to do to set up um, this equation, right? You're basically going to take, they say, determine the percentage difference between the income and expenses, right? So you're going to take your income minus your expenses, right? Divided by, right? What do you divide by? The expenses, right? Okay. So this formula basically looks similar to the formula that I just showed you, right? But remember, because you want the change in percentage, you still need to multiply by 100 because the answer that you've basically obtained, right, needs to be in percentage, right? So what was the income, right, for the people living in Chicago East? Okay, what was the income? Okay, the income was 49 thousand two hundred and thirteen minus what was the expense the expenses was forty eight thousand and twenty one divided by your expenses forty eight thousand and twenty one multiplied by a hundred okay so forty nine thousand two hundred and thirteen minus forty eight thousand and twenty one that basically will give us 1,192, right, divided by 48,021, multiplied by 100. And if you punch that into your calculator, you'll get that the change in percentage is 2.482473535%. And that is approximately 2.48%. All right, so that is basically our answer there, okay? How would they mark this question, right? You'll get one mark, obviously, for reading your income and your expenses from the table, okay? You'll get one mark for, obviously, multiplying it by 100. Another mark for, obviously, the correct use of the formula, right? That the change in percentage is, like, your new value minus your old value divided by your old value. However, here, they've basically um, helped to see what is going to be our new value, what is going to be our old value, right? Because they specifically told us that we need to determine what right, the percentage difference between the income and expenses so literally income minus expenses divided by right your expenses okay the question told you exactly what you basically needed to do okay and then you'll basically get your final mark for your final answer of 2.48 percent that is out of four how would they mark the other questions okay question 4.1.1 you'll get one mark for obviously subtracting the 63k from the 59k and the final mark for your final answer it's out of two okay question 4.1.2 you get just two marks for saying chicago east from for just literally 
reading that from your uh, bar graph, you get two marks, okay? Okay, question 4.1.3, okay? For any reasonable explanation of what the implication is of having your expenses way more than your cost, right? You'll just get two marks for that okay question 4.1.4 .4, you'll get one mark um for obviously saying yes or no uh, for obviously saying yes you'll get one mark okay and the other mark for basically explaining that when your salary increases so does the amount you pay for tax that's two marks okay and that is basically it for question 4.1 um from your um ding september 2022 paper one that was written by the gauteng province learners okay hope you guys enjoyed this video tutorial guys please make sure that you are subscribed because on the next video tutorial i will be going through question 4.2 and question 4.2 deals with uh percentages right we're going to be calculating percentages we're going to be calculating probability we're going to be calculating the interquartile range and we're going to be determining ratios okay so if you know that you're struggling with these particular topics please make sure that you watch um this video tutorial um and please also make sure that you've got your notification bells turned on that is it guys and i'll see you guys on my next upload distance learning with lee where i make learning mathematics is super easy guys.